All right, thanks everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we are going to talk about how to keep your business on track. Five ways to recover from ransomware. My name is Carla Fedrigo and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Infrascale. And all my contact info is here for you. I wanted to share that with you. And then also, if you want to grab a copy of these slides, please go ahead and grab them from the handout section. So just below, there's a question tool. There's also a handout tool. And you can grab a copy of these slides in there. We also shared with you a 2016 Disaster Recovery Attitudes and Adoption Report and then a Ransomware Survival Guide. So you have all of that there for you accessible in the handouts. And if you have questions throughout the presentation, use the question tool to type those in. We are going to come to the Q&A as well. Um, and then finally, last sort of housekeeping announcement is that we are recording. So you are going to be able to grab a copy of that recording. You'll see it posted within about 24 hours at infrascale.com slash webinars. And we'd love for you to also join the conversation. So you can follow us on Twitter at Infrascale. You can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and we would love to chat with you. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the agenda. First, we're going to be talking about the key trends that we've been seeing here in 2016. We'll talk about how to avoid ransomware, the five steps to keep you protected, so those five ways to stay on track and avoid ransomware, and then we'll come to the Q&A as well. All right, so taking a look first is just the fact that every company relies on data and systems uptime for survival. So really, we just are, are facing every organization's IT system needs to be up and running at all times. And really, that requires implementing a proper business continuity and disaster recovery plan. Now, what do you have at risk if you don't implement a proper plan? Well, here are the calculated averages for cost per hour of downtime. So small companies lost over $8,000 per hour of downtime. And then large organizations reported losses of over $163,000. Now, that's the, the average there was just over $200,000. And if everyone knows how expensive that downtime is, why hasn't everyone adopted a proper solution? Well, what we found is the barriers to adoption, this is a survey ranging in companies from 100 to 5,000 employees, and only 10% of those companies surveyed said that they could fail over within 15 minutes. The reasons holding them back here, of course, the misperceived cost and we are going to talk about that before the end of the presentation here, as well as insufficient resources and then IT complexity issues. So taking a look at some of the, the trade-offs with backup and disaster recovery. Now, whether you use tape backup, cloud backup, appliance backup, or even cold, warm, and hot site DR, there are invariably going to be trade-offs between the cost and the recovery time. Now, what you really want is to be right here, that red dot in the upper left, the lowest cost with the highest recovery time. And when I say highest recovery time, I mean quickest. You need the fastest recovery time available, so the highest level. Now, any vendor could deliver on this promise if you find the right vendor. You want to be able to quickly reboot and virtualize all of your machines to keep your end users productive while you fix that root cause of any outage. So while that outage could be ransomware, and that's what we're going to focus on today, it could also be a natural disaster, it could be human error, it could be a hardware failure, and that's where we take a look at the causes of downtime. So while we are going to focus on ransomware today, it is important to just realize here, if you look on the right, the top causes of downtime over 75% of all downtime is caused from hardware failure and human error combined. And then we have software failures, natural disasters, that all comes into play as well. So anytime we talk about backup and disaster recovery, we are talking about how to recover from both those micro and macro disasters. 
Now let's look at some of those ransomware trends, that first um, item on our agenda. So these are some trends that we've been seeing in 2016. Now in just the first quarter of this year, almost 3,000 new malware modifications were reported. And we know that ransomware gets activated by an end user. So that end user lets it in and it starts modifying all the files on the system until you get, say, a triggered ransom demand um, and a message saying here's how much you need to pay and here's how you can pay it. Now if you get one of those ransom demands, then paying it is going to involve Bitcoin, an e-currency, a cryptocurrency, then once those hackers verify the payment, they'll provide the decryptor software. Now after you have that decryptor software, the computer is then going to start the long process of decrypting all your files. Now that's a lengthy process. So that's why the fastest response times until you're back up and running can take about two days. So that's the second stat here, 72% of ransomware victims were unable to access their data for two days. That can take up to five days in other cases as well. So we know that they're getting away with it because of this third stat, the amount of money paid in ransoms. Now this, these are stats reported from the FBI that um, let us know over $200 million has been paid in ransomware in the first three months of 2016. So that was Q1 of 2016. Now compare that with the total of $25 million paid in all of 2015, all of last year. Now how do you know if you are infected with ransomware? These are a couple of the really obvious symptoms there. So you suddenly can't open your normal files. Maybe you're getting errors that the file is corrupted or it has the wrong extension. Or if a window opens to a ransomware program and you just can't close it. Or maybe you get a warning about a countdown or the ransom is increasing. Um, especially if you see files renamed, how to decrypt files or decrypt instructions. Now here's a look at some of those um, ransom demands. Once those files are encrypted, the hackers are going to display a screen like this. Now in the past, those ransoms started in maybe the three to five hundred dollar range. But fast forward to 2016, now companies are being hit with ransoms in the thousands of dollars. So you really need to ask yourself, how long is it going to take to restore systems to pre-infection? And would the downtime be costlier or more disastrous than paying a ransom? So what we want to discuss is really your, our mission, which we hope is also your mission. InfraScale is a disaster recovery as a service company, and we're using the cloud to eradicate downtime and data loss. And so that's what our mission is. It's a very simple mission. Um, well, of course, we can't eradicate the causes of that downtime, but what we're trying to do is really alleviate uh, the, the, the causes of, um, alleviate the pain that a business experiences in the event of any outage. So really uh, eradicate the pain that a business will have with a ransomware attack. So let's take a look at how we actually do that and how you'll be able to do that as well. So here are a couple of screenshots from my InfraScale dashboard. Now really important to note is that by default InfraScale keeps every file ever backed up. So that forever archiving is really, really critical and that's an important part to note. Now, my InfraScale account isn't just the backup and recovery software on my machine. Here's a quick board. So from my dashboard, I can view activity alerts. I can access reporting and monitoring here. I can monitor account usage and manage retention settings. And I can control remote deployments as well. So this is a unified management console. It doesn't require VPN access. And I can simply log in from any browser, even if it's on a tablet, a smartphone, a laptop. So I can access my dashboard from anywhere in the world. 
Now this account level details is one more page in, in my dashboard. Just a page that I wanted to screenshot here to show you to talk about a little bit more in depth. So here is an analytics tab that what we did is create a brand new monitoring alert off of these analytics of account level details. This new alert is called anomaly detection. So if you have a large number of newly modified files, you want to know what happened to all that data and what's affecting it. So an average backup is going to continue as normal, but an unusually large backup is going to trigger an anomaly alert to the admin there. So let's take a look at anomaly detection in action. So here's a quick video here to run through how to set up anomaly warning. So simply go up to the settings tab, and then when you click on monitoring, you can see here at the bottom is the enable anomaly detection option. And again, so what we're doing here, we're calculating a rolling average number of modified files. And that's working over time for each device. So if that modified file count for a backup passes this threshold here that you determine, so you predetermine this threshold, then we'll release a warning. And if you're subscribing to our error events, then you'll receive that email alert. And you can also view it right within your dashboard as well. So it appears in the general monitoring page. So you can also, those details that we just saw, those are things like backup duration, total files processed, how many files are modified. And then in this manage action here, you can download the logs if you want to investigate at a file level. And this is really critical because nobody has this type of proactive alerting. None of the BDR solutions out there today have this warning system in place. So it's not only the cost of that ransom, it's the cost of the downtime associated with it if you have a ransomware attack. Now what if just backup isn't enough? Well that's where disaster recovery comes into play, or DRAZ, which is disaster recovery on demand. It lets you quickly fail over your systems and it supports DR to be on demand like we're going to see in this scenario here. So here are some end users that are working and unknown to them, they're about to experience an unexpected outage, likely a ransomware attack. So with on-demand failover, you can simply log in from any browser, even again on a laptop, a tablet, or even a smartphone. You can roll back to a previous date and you can instantly recover a clean version of that whole environment. And those end users there, you can see now, keep working. And that whole entire process happens in 15 minutes guaranteed. So here's a, a more detailed way to look at it. And again, all these slides are available to you in the handout section if you want to take a further look. On the left here, you see the traditional backup flow. So you have the production server and the uh, backup server next to it copying data to the cloud or any offsite storage tape on prem disk and then here's that uh, ransomware alert or any type of outage here then you need to copy that data back out of storage reconfigure reboot that's going to take you days now take a look on the right here where you have draz so you have the production server and the backup server next to it, but again, you just simply virtualize and recover, and you can do this within 15 minutes guaranteed. So you're not worried about copying data back and forth, moving data back, and then take and then bringing it back down again. We move compute to where the data sits. So whether you have 100 terabytes or just one terabyte. Regardless of how much data you have, in 15 minutes guaranteed, you can spin that up in the cloud or on the appliance locally, and you can have a running system so you can just get back to work as normal. So what we're going to see in the next maybe five to ten years here, traditional backup and recovery is really going to be replaced by on-demand failover and by DRAZ solutions. 
So while, of course, yeah, we have a great backup and uh, recovery solution for you, but more importantly is that disaster recovery as a service solution, so the on-demand failover. And again, the reason that's so important is because you instantly recover a clean version of the entire environment. It's not just files and folders, right? So let's take a look at the top five data protection must-haves. So first is you want to avoid reserved infrastructure, and that comes into play with what we just saw as well. Um, we saw some of the trade-offs that some solutions can achieve the recovery time that you want, but just not the cost. And here's why. On the left, you see that because of the bandwidth, the people involved with one of those traditional uh, production sites that replicates over to a failover site, it can cost up to three times as much to implement a proper DR solution. So if you avoid reserved infrastructure, it's going to save you cost. Now, you also want to avoid hardware-heavy solutions. So on the left, you see those hardware-heavy solutions where more space equals more appliance, but they get really costly really fast. So what we do is we utilize cloud spillover technology. So we're intelligently spilling data over to the cloud, and it's all based on policies that you set regarding the age and the value of your data. Now, you also want a solution that's designed end-to-end. -end. So taking a look here at all of the details that Infrascale can cover. So you want to back up any device, support for any operating system, deploy it in any form, storage in any cloud. That's really important, too. You have the flexibility of storing your data in the vendor's cloud, your own private cloud, or third-party cloud, maybe Amazon or AWS. AWS or, or Azure. And then you want to be able to recover anything and fail back your systems as well. Now that brings us to number four, prioritize recovery and also testing. So think about what you would normally have to do at, say, Saturday at 2 a.m. and this ransomware attack or this outage comes up. You have to actually get out get out of bed, go to your car, drive to a data center, you want to start recovering from backups, and you're not really sure when that ransomware hit, so you don't know where to recover from. So imagine if you could just grab your iPad from your nightstand, and you can automatically bring back all the servers you need to in the right order and all within 15 minutes. Again, with testing as well. Testing used to be a huge hassle. You do it maybe once a year. But what about being able to do it every day? Now, last note is on security and encryption here. We definitely pay attention to privacy. So rather than other solutions taking raw files and sending them to the cloud, InfraSkill uses a military-grade double-blind encryption system to protect data. And that's really the best practice compared to any other systems. You don't simply want to send raw files to the cloud. So that brings us to pricing. Let's talk about cost. Here you can see we did an apples to apples comparison, and we did that with Barracuda, Unitrends, and Datto. We took the cost of a 10 terabyte appliance plus three years of cloud storage, and here we're letting you compare for yourself. You can see here that with Infrascale, you can save up to 70% in comparison to those vendors. And now how do we do this? Well, we're using intelligent software with built-in deduplication, compression, and WAN acceleration technologies. We've completely eliminated the costly hardware, and where a single one UDR appliance can scale from one terabyte of protected storage to over 100 terabytes. And you can bolt on unlimited amount of cloud space as well for long-term storage and for archiving, again, using that intelligent intelligent cloud spillover that we just looked at. So basically, pricing with Infrascale lets you save up to 70% in comparison to others. It's all based on the number of terabytes protected, so you only pay for what you protect. And here's a closer look at that, a closer competitive comparison. A more detailed look with this chart that helps you summarize all of the key, key criteria that you want to be looking at when you're comparing solutions. 
So you can see here, all the major vendors don't stack up the way that InfraScale does. Now we're about halfway through our presentation here. We do want to get into the Q&A. We normally have lots of questions coming through here, so we do want to be able to answer all those questions for you. But we do want to help you eradicate downtime and data loss. So with that in mind, I want to offer everyone our on-demand cloud failover solution where you can test it out free for 60 days. So use it for yourself and you can take advantage of this by typing 60 days free into that questions and comments tool and then we'll get you set up with that. Now we are going to go over to the Q&A in just a minute here, so start getting all of those questions in. But I'm going to launch a quick poll here before we do that. So simply, would you like to learn more about ransomware or BDR from InfraScale? Now of course, a lot of, the, a lot of those questions that you might have are going to be answered in the Q&A next. But this quick poll here, I'm going to give everyone a moment to answer. So yes, I'd like to learn more about InfraScale and failover DRAS, or B, Yes, in, in for educational ransomware or BDR info would be very helpful. Or C, no, not yet, maybe later on. So I'll give everyone a moment to answer there. All right, great, so we have 83% of you have voted, which is wonderful. And so what I'll do is close this poll down. It looks like we have 60% of you have answered either A or B. Yes, I'd like some more info from InfraScale or some educational info. And then C, um, uh, another 40% answered no, not yet, maybe later. So that's great to get some of the educational info as well. Don't forget to grab a copy of those handouts where you have the slides from today, and then you also have the 2016 DRAZ Attitudes and Adoption Report, and you also have the Ransomware Survival Guide. All right, let me close this poll down here, and then with that, I'm going to turn it over to our senior sales engineer, Aaron Jordan, for the Q&A. So take it away, Aaron. Thank you for that, Carla. So uh, the good news is, as we've been going through this, I've been getting some uh, private questions asked. So I'm going to answer those now. I just won't give the name. If you have any that haven't been answered as I go through this, go ahead and just uh, you know send them in and I'll answer them as soon as they come up. So the first one I asked, uh, can you give a quick overview of the history and funding and customers of InfraScale? So uh, this is, might take me a bit. <laughs> so InfraScale was founded in about 2011. It's headquartered in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we are venture backed and we have about 150 plus uh, employees worldwide. We are uh, focused on providing secure failover and cloud solutions to over thousands of MSP partners across the globe, and in turn protecting millions of these endpoints that they have in devices. And about 20 billion, we have about 20 billion data objects that we are protecting globally and worldwide. So um, we've been doing this for quite some time, and um, we have a lot of experience in doing this. Another question. Um, so are there average costs in the cloud as limits are met? And if I go over capacity, is my data not backed up? Uh, so if you go over uh, capacity, uh, we'll basically reach out to you and help you with that. Uh, and there's a couple ways you can go with that. We, we give you the ability to either um, uh, have our support team jump in and assist in cleaning things up, or you can use this as an opportunity to um, you know, market towards your users and saying, hey, this is added data that you didn't expect, but growth is normal. Uh, would you, you know, like to get more? Um, either way, um, we can help them or you or both to get the right schedules that are going to back up the right data, and, and and if they grow, help help that growth facilitate in, in a in a good manner instead of a you know shock. Um, what changes regarding cost? 
if a cloud backup server needs to be spun up, are there costs associated with spinning up in the cloud? So that's actually a really good question. So there's only really, well, not really, there are only two line items in our solution. We have our appliance, the, the upfront like uh, setup fee, which includes all the training, all the materials, the hardware itself, the software, the everything is completely included. And then we have the cloud cost, uh, which is the month to month. And so that cloud cost will cover everything, uh, compute, uh, so all your RAM and CPU resources, the um, the bandwidth required to run it, the public IPs if that, that's required, site-to-site -site VPN, all the goodies that are involved in setting that up, it's all included in the cost. There are no hidden fees. So again, you have the setup fee and then you have the, the cloud cost that you pay if you want the cloud as well. Um, and then everything gets thrown in. I should mention too, this includes all of the warranty, all the support, and all the updates. So unlike our competitors, we won't charge you when something cool comes out. It just You just need to update your device and it's all yours. Um, you didn't share cost. What's the pricing model? For the, an engineer, but definitely um, we're just, I can give you the basics. We're only looking at cloud, we're only looking at storage, right? So whether you're using the uh, InfraScale Cloud Backup or the InfraScale Disaster Recovery, Everything is based off of the number of terabytes that you need. So we'll look at that, and then we'll quote your price based off that. And so the good news is there won't be any surprises if, for example, you need to protect two terabytes, but it's a huge database that requires a lot of RAM to run. We got that covered in there. You won't have to worry about paying more for that simply because one client has a need over another for resources. So it's, it's all just storage-based. And then that range can be anywhere from one terabyte all the way up to petabytes. Uh, we do have a couple clients that run in the petabyte range. And with our InfraScale Cloud Backup, you can divide that storage space however you feel. So there is no need for a site license or limitation on file types or, or any of that stuff. It's just, here's your storage, do what you want with it. Um, do you support Linux? Yeah, actually, we support every version of Linux. We can actually boot uh, CentOS and, and Red Hat boxes on our appliances. And I mentioned that because I'm talking about physical machines, not virtual machines. I can boot any virtual machine, VM or Hyper-V on my appliance, regardless of the guest operating system. I can also boot physical Windows boxes and some versions like CentOS and Red Hat of Linux uh, physical boxes on the appliance. So disaster recovery is, is feasible for both physical and virtual environments. Um, is the real-time backup, is there real-time backup or can we determine the frequency of how often it's snapshot. Yeah, so um, we have schedules that you can make go as frequently as you want. With the InfraScale Cloud Backup, so the direct to cloud approach, we do have something called LiProtect, where you can have it monitor a folder or files, and it'll just automatically pick them up the second they've been changed. Uh, with our appliance, it's more of a schedule basis. We're looking at disaster recovery, so there needs to be a little more organization to it. Um, so with the appliance, you can say to run every 15 minutes if you want to, and it'll take that snapshot. Uh, for VMs, can you only get the most recent or can you go back to checkpoints? I assume you mean recovery points. And to that end, InfraScale offers um, uh, dynamic recovery point recovery. So you don't need to like wait for it to hydrate that version. Uh, you can just simply pull up the machine, see a list of recovery points, and say, I want that one. And it'll instantly make the files available. Uh, likewise, it works for the booting. So you can instantly make that machine bootable. Uh, assuming it's on the compatibility list, which we can cover uh, in, in a separate SE call, which is basically most stuff. Uh, do we need to allow for specific storage considerations? Uh, so actually, the good news is we'll do that thinking for you. So um, I'll, I'll go with you, and, and I'll look at a site. We actually have a document that we ask that you fill out, and it will outline the environment, so databases or files and folders, et cetera. And then I will, based off of that, know that, okay, I need to make sure that their growth rate looks like this, or I find out your growth rate, and a plan accordingly. And so this way, what you're paying for is only what you're protecting. All the hardware that goes into making that possible, I've got you covered for that. So you don't have to worry about paying for that. It's that you're paying for, not hardware that you're paying for. Which, to that end, I should mention, if you buy an appliance today, and three years from now you like it, but you've grown, you just have to pay the additional cost for uh, the additional terabytes you're protecting, and I can give you brand new hardware. So it could be a very, very, very cheap upgrade uh, in hardware, 
if maybe you only need like one extra terabyte to back up, or maybe it's just time to upgrade the hardware anyway. Um, so that's all part of the service. It's all included. So um, think of it as a service, not as a how much do I have to pay for the hardware, how much do I have to pay for the storage, how much do I have to pay for the licensing. It's all just license space to cover the rest. Are there bandwidth, uh, bandwidth requirements or limitations? Uh, so generally speaking, we just say one megabit per second. Um, of course, you know, the speed will determine how fast you can push it. Uh, but the good news is the reason I can give you such a low connection requirement for the one megabit per second is because we do a lot of change block. In fact, we do all change block tracking backups. So whether we're talking about um, uh, files and folders or full-on virtual machines, I'm just going to look at the blocks, and I'm going to only push the blocks up to the cloud, and then I can rebuild it on the other side. So essentially, uh, the technology, both Global DDoop and our DDFS assisted, will ensure that your data are going to be up and on the other side quickly, even if you have no bandwidth to speak of. And to that end, um, we do support things like um, um, cloud sovereignty. So uh, I did want to mention this because I, I think of Canadians when I think of uh, bandwidth because they have to pay for it on top of having to pay for uh, speeds. They have to pay for usage of speeds. And the DDFS saves them that. But we also have data sovereignty in, in Canada and, and the US and, and the United Kingdom, et cetera. So if you have clients that are in foreign countries that have laws that say the data stays in this country, we can accommodate that for most, if not all, cases. So just keep that in mind. Um, what is your support like? Uh, so we have 24-7 stateside support. We have email, chat, ticketing, um, phone support, of course, knowledge base. Um, and so the SLA is uh, maximum two hours. We try to aim for the hour mark, um, and that's day or night. So, yeah. Um, can you support other cloud services? So, if you mean like not use InfraScale's cloud, yeah, definitely. Um, we have support for Amazon Azure, or Amazon and Azure. We do private cloud. So, if you have your own hardware, your own data center, I can deploy in there. Um, and then there are some exciting uh, updates coming that I can't share right now with some other larger corporations that have huge cloud infrastructures that we are integrating with. So we can basically put you in anything. Uh, so speaking of data centers, how many data centers do you have worldwide? So we have 16 global points of preference in, uh, presence, including 12 data centers. Um, so US, Canada, UK, Australia, South Africa, South America. Um, I've got one in a couple in Europe too. So I got not just the UK, but I have one in Germany as well. Um, so yeah, and then by the way, we've got like six or seven in the United States. So lots of data centers worldwide that you can point your data to. And I should mention this time around because I know the inevitable question is, what are your compliance regula regulations? What do you support? So all Starbanks actually SOC certified data centers: SAS 70, SSA 16, ISO 270001, two and three. Uh, on top of, I, I know that Safe Harbor isn't used anymore for most of Europe, but there are some people that still require it. We do support Safe Harbor. And then even to that end, we actually have what we call Siegis data centers. So if you're familiar with those, we can take care of your government data. So for those who aren't familiar, Siegis data centers allow you to back up police stations, FBI uh, facilities, government data with top secret clearance. So we do have a Siegis data center and a Siegis crew that can take care of that data, no problem. Uh, and to that end, any one of these data centers that you want proof on, we're, we're definitely happy and recommend that you get it anyway for auditing purposes. You can submit a support ticket and say, hey, here's my information. I'm not crazy. Um, so they have to do a check on you. And within 48 hours, they will send you a document that you'll sign an NDA. And that will give you the information regarding our data centers that if you get audited, you say, here you go. Uh, you can go and check this out, and then you're, you're good to go. Uh, on top of that, we do recommend and do sign business associate agreements, which are required for HIPAA, uh, on top of uh, a lot of the government, like um, uh, some FINMA scenarios, and most importantly, the CGIS require that to be signed. Um, you know, track who has the data where. So that's all taken care of for you. You can get. Um, let's see. 
next question. Should we have a backup of our backup, or do you replicate our data and automatically bring it back to us? How redundant are your data centers? All right, so the data basically will hop over to our data center. So if you're using our, our appliance, uh, it will go from your um, local site to a cloud site, and that cloud site would then uh, replicate within its node, and then from there replicate to a random data center that isn't uh, disclosed to the um, to the greater public at large mainly and most of our team um, it goes to another random one just in case like for example they like somebody's specifically tracing tracking you and they find out that you for scale and they find out that this happens to be the data center that you're going to and they take out the data center well the good news is it's your data is in another data center elsewhere and it's not logged in a way that people can look it up pull it out even most of our crew can't see it so um, it will prevent you from having to worry about, you know, the secondary site being found out in weeks as well. Um, got a few more here. Um, what do you do if I have a mobile device stolen? Can I? It's a pull data from the cloud, but how do I restore that? Okay. Um, so basically, um, we have mobile device management. In our solution, in with our in our infrastructure cloud backup, and what that allows you to do is jump in to delete data remotely uh, on the local machine. And the idea is you can always recover it from the cloud, but the, but you want to make sure that you're not um, you're not out of luck when somebody steals your laptop and all of a sudden they're they're taking your private data too. You can purge it on that local machine remotely and then still recover it from the cloud. And you basically just prevented. You know, a leak of maybe your social security number or or your tax documents or something like that. All right, and uh, I think I see one more. Um, the appliance can support hundreds of different operating systems, or you know, so it says. What doesn't it support? Um, so um, usually, the ones that we don't support are the more obscure operating systems. The only big one that I've come across that we don't support yet, uh, which is actually already on the roadmap for completion, is going to be uh, AS400 series boxes. But whether you 